Well, it's a couple days after Halloween. We survived our big uh, garage haunt. It was our first one like this. And I thought I'd do a quick walkthrough uh, with the lights on, although we've started tearing some stuff down. But uh, this uh, haunt is just a maze that's in our garage. It uses uh, some controller boards and motion sensors and an Arduino uh, to try to time and control everything. Uh, the first item up here is uh, Straub's uh, controller board that I soldered up and has a motion sensor. The sound is turned off, but it has the MP3 player on it. And up there is the uh, LED uh, projector, and then we can see the uh, motion sensor that picks it up. So this one here is controlled uh, nicely all by itself. But uh, you come around the corner over here, and then you may be focusing in on the ghoul, but the motion sensor picks up activity. It's up here at the top. That's fed to an Arduino, and the Arduino times it, so he controls the spirit spider and then turns on the zombie horde over here in activity. So the Arduino takes the input and activates the spirit spider remotely through the uh, foot pad control and then also activates the uh, gr uh, ground breakers over here. And I had accidentally just triggered him. So he's actually triggered off the motion sensor up there. So he actually works off of uh, another straw controller board, also has an MP3 player on it, the card. Uh, audio is turned off right now for him. So we get up to here. So we were playing background uh, feed and as well as he, his audio would trigger with the uh, straw board. And over here is where we had the Arduino sitting on the bench with the uh, various relays. So it would get input when I used uh, RJ11 phone wire running uh, throughout to tie everything together. And basically these guys were running off of their uh, foot pad uh, uh, trigger. So again the Arduino would send the output to it. And then when we came over here, Junior was hiding in the corner with his halo like outfit. We start to make the turn, and some of the stuff again has already been taken down, but we can see up here is another motion sensor. When he is triggered, it triggers activity here. So the voltage box was a little bit different because on the side there's a port that you can use. It's a try me button. I wired that into the Arduino and so it also would trigger this and it would act as if it was holding a button down and keeping uh, uh, in demo mode as if you were holding it down and it would do it for 28 seconds and so then once after that period of time was up then it would release the relay as if someone had released the button. And then last but not least, we just quickly threw this together. My father-in-law would sit here in his biohazard suit and he would just hit the try me button. And it would activate this. Same thing under here is another straw board I had quickly put together. And so it would uh, uh, play a background track plus it had the MP3 card in it. And uh, so it would play its audio. So that was quickly thrown together. And then down here, I put the cards inside of these uh, Tupperware containers to kind of try to help protect them and uh, kind of keep everything secure. So in this case here, we had uh, uh, power supply plugged into it and driving it. And then we had uh, inexpensive uh, computer speakers were playing. That actually was kind of a downfall because the audio wasn't as loud or as overpowering as I would have liked. So I think that's a lesson learned for next year. I think that's about it uh, in terms of what we had done. This area relied a lot on black lights. We had black lights throughout so it was dark. And uh, of course everything was fluorescent and paint so it reacted well with it. I thought I'd point out something else that was uh, kind of interesting and that we ended up learning 
Uh, I was struggling with trying to find a good way to hold the pneumatic props and so I was making everything out of uh, metal and aluminum and it just wasn't sturdy enough. And then the wife came in and she says, how about using umbrella bases? So, so it actually worked out really well. I used a closet pole to hold the, the mechanism. And then it, from there it was very basic and very simple to use some uh, angle iron from uh, Home Depot. And then of course the action in this case is a basic up and down action. But at least for this purpose here, we've got a good foundation and it was easy to hold them. So I ended up using this for, for all the props where I put umbrella bases in there and then provided a good foundation. The other item she came up with was I was needing to have access to the garage while I was still working. So she's like, what about using something like shower curtain hangers? And so in this case here, I uh, started hanging everything back in late August and then with the shower curtain holders it was easy to just go ahead and be able to slide things in and out because I still needed access to the workbench as everything was being assembled. So I ran around and put half inch uh, EMT up and then from there was able to uh, put uh, the shower curtain rings onto that and picked them up at Target on the cheap and then I could slide things in and out of the way. I think that's about it. Although we had put the compressor out back. Now we're going back through and triggering everything again. So the other issue we ran into was timing. We first timed everything and tried to figure it out and we had too many delays in there because the kids were running through the here as soon as things started triggering so the timing was off. So I reluctantly in the middle of the haunt jumped in here with my ladder and uh, readjusted the motion sensors and as well as quickly plugged the computer in and changed the timing on the Arduino. Once I did that everything seemed to flow a lot better but the lesson learned there was uh, they don't hang around. They quickly blew through here and I think sometimes as they were getting scared they picked up the pace. Uh, anyways, time to start planning for next year. <laughs>